Good evening, everyone. Simon Mannering, thanks for your time. Um, I'm an advertising creative, and you know I've worked at, in Australia, then Ligus Delaney and Saatchi in London, then Wyden and Kennedy and Ogilvy in the States. So I'd done all the right things in terms of being an advertising creative. But then as the digital revolution came through, I noticed that a lot of agencies weren't embracing it fully. They were either outsourcing the digital work to digital companies or bringing those companies in-house, buying them up. Then as social media came through as well, again, I felt that the agencies were being reluctant. So I thought I needed to keep myself relevant. So, and I thought the fastest way to do that and to fully understand social media was to use myself as a guinea pig. So I started blogging, I started Twitter and all these other things so that you really knew what was going on so that you could represent to your client exactly what they should do. Um, I also thought it was, it was an essential brand building tool. You know, I have a book coming out next year and I thought, you know, in this sort of marketplace, the tools to build your own audience are right there, arguably for free, all the time. So if we really consider ourselves to be marketers, we should put that to the test and do it for ourselves. So I, you know, I think that the, the future of the advertising industry is going to be totally transformed in the next few years. And I think there was a lot of changes last year that people probably excused away as a function of the recession. But I think a second wave of those changes are going through now. And we've seen it with the music industry. We've seen it with the auto industry. We've seen it with the financial industry. Now the publishing industry. And I think the advertising industry is undergoing the same change right now. And I think it's better to be on the right side of that. Well, you can always tell the bloggers up here where the ones with the big rings around our eyes. Um, I don't know about you. I've got you know two kids and a full-time job, and which you know is, takes up all my time. So I think. I'd be lying to say it doesn't take an extra amount of time, you know, after everyone goes to bed or before you get up in the morning and you've got your tweet deck going on during the day and uh, you try and work out what's the most effective way to schedule uh, tweets and all that sort of thing. But um, the rewards by far compensate for, the, for what it costs you. If you're a creative, and that's not limited to the advertising definition, but if you're a creative animal by nature, one of the most rewarding things, and I think the reason we all got into the business, is the creative dialogue we have, whether it's through film, commercials, whatever else. And I found, to my pleasure, that the same dialogue that I found would go on solely within, for example, Wyden and Kennedy in, on Nike in Portland is now available to everyone as they exchange you know, the latest film, the latest content with each other around the world. And when you do that through a blog or through Twitter or through Facebook, you can actually do that with people on the other side of the world all the time. So the rewards are actually very energizing, which is a good thing because it's also quite exhausting. I, I would just add one comment about the corporate site doesn't have to be kind of barren of engagement. Um, the, the best way I can explain it is through an example. Um, I worked with Saatchi earlier in the year doing this Prius launch with the people in the landscape and so on. Um, and the proposition or the challenge was to solve how to launch the third generation Prius. But the solution that we came to was a much larger proposition based around the idea of harmony between man, nature and machine. Once you do that, once you take the high ground and try and own as big a piece of the emotional pie on behalf of the brand, you can talk about man, the driver's needs, you can talk about nature, you can talk about harmony and still be talking about something that's relevant to the product. So suddenly, once your value systems are in place and your emo the emotional territory that you own is in place, you can be talking about things that, on the face of it, are completely unrelated to the vehicle, but because of the brand positioning, are very relevant to the vehicle. So there is an argument to say that if you approach it the right way strategically on behalf of a brand, you can have a very engaged... For example, the Prius um, Facebook page has 41,000 engaged members, and what they do is they leverage the dealer network who keep the conversation going, yet at the same time, you've got thousands and thousands of people who are passionate about their Priuses talking about them all the time. So it, it can work, and I think strategy is a, has a role to play in that. There's a couple of guys out there who are like sloppyblogging.com, <laughs> and if you miss a punctuation point or you don't make sense somewhere, you just get these random emails that go, sloppy work. Da, da, da. It's, it's fantastic <laughs> that anyone would have the time or interest to do that is astounding, but it's very real. I've posted things and people have put me on Republican watch lists, which terrified me not being from America. I thought I was going to be killed or something. <laughs> um, and um, other times, you know, pe I wrote something saying that I personally felt that video games have a tendency to increase violence among 
teenagers. And I had <laughs> a guy who's very passionate about video games getting very angry with me about that opinion, which seemed to me to prove the point. But, um, <laughs> you know, and you have to respect their opinion and just say, I totally get it. I said, is there anything you could direct me to? to would sort of, you know, help me understand this a little bit better. And he sensed that, you know, and you kind of, calm down, <laughs> calm down, don't kill me. So anyway, you just have to respect differences of opinion. So often, when you come in as a, uh, as a creative to a, an advertising assignment, a big part of the messaging problem is that a company doesn't know who it is itself. So if you, a lot of consultants get paid a lot of money to come into a company, ask 200 people what their company stands for, they get 200 different answers, they go back to the CEO and say, you don't have an advertising problem, you have a branding problem, here's my invoice. An internal blog could do a great deal of work to that end because having worked on large companies like Motorola and so on, often they're so large that the different divisions not only don't communicate, they're in competition with each other. And if you have an internal blog, that can do a lot of work towards getting them all on the same page, especially if it's informed by the values of the brand and it's sort of moderated by some sort of steward for the brand. And then the advertising internally can help that as well. So.